what's up my beautiful people it's your girl jamika and i'm back with another youtube video thank you so much for tuning in and watching with me now before we get into it please make sure that you guys go ahead and subscribe to the channel and hit that thumbs up button give it a big like if you enjoyed it and liked it that will let me know that you want more content like it also hit that notification bell button down below as well so you'll stay up to date on all my new videos that i upload and post and you won't miss a single thing and spread this video on all your social media platforms so we can get the word out there and help grow the channel and also if you're looking for something to feed yourself make sure you hit up jw.org now let's get right into the video let's go okay so y'all r&b singer carrie hilson recently had an interview with claudia jordan on her second podcast called out loud with claudia jordan and you know they do their live recordings or tapings and upload these videos and interviews onto the fox soul youtube channel so check it out if you want to see the full video but basically carrie in this in this interview revealed that the beef that she quote unquote initiated back in the day between the years 2008 to 2011 she said that she was forced to try to start that beef by people in the industry around her now carrie's fame and stardom it came quickly but it fleeted and left just as quick because she had hits between the year 2008 and 2009 and almost 2010 she didn't quite get that far she had hits with kanye west called knock you down with nelly called loose control she had her own songs called pretty girl rock and energy and she also had songs with timbaland called the way i are and also with Lil Wayne called Turning Me On. But the remix of Turning Me On that she did is what eventually got her in hot water and ended her career. And to be quite honest, this whole situation is very saddening because her career looked so promising because she was not only beautiful, but she also had a banging body. She had, you know, that sex appeal. She also was talented. She could actually sing. She wrote her own music. She could dance. She had so many collaborations, whether it was collabs or just singles. All her music was doing really well. She could have went way farther than what she did. But unfortunately, because of this situation, her career was put on a halt for almost a decade now. Now, the drama and the quote unquote beef basically began when the song to the remix of Turning Me On was quote unquote leaked, according to Carrie. She said that when people heard it, they started thinking that she was talking about Beyonce in the song. And I'm going to read you guys the lyrics to kind of let you know and get a picture of what she was talking about and how people could think that, oh, yeah, she was talking about Beyonce. OK, now the lyrics to the Turning Me Off remix said this. I ain't trying to start some mess. There's just something on my chest that I need to get off because you're turning me off. Your vision cloudy if you think that you're the best. You can dance, she can sing, but she needs to move it to the left, to the left. She needs to have some babies. She needs to sit down. She fake. Them other chicks ain't even worth my time to talk about. Now, child, you know when Beyonce stands, not the fans, but the stands, the beehive, when they heard this, they went in on Carrie Hilson. And to this day, they still haven't let her live that down. And they still come for her all on social media, which caused her to get go into depression and stop recording music. Okay. And Beyonce didn't do nothing to tell her beehive to calm down. She just let them swoop in on her. Okay. Beast to honey, moth to a flame. Okay. And, and, and get. Yeah, it, it was all bad. Now, the rumor was Carrie Hilson had a disdain for Beyonce, and it began all back in 2008 when Hilson was slated to appear in Usher's Love in the Club Part 2. However, she was replaced by Beyonce because, of course, Beyonce is the biggest star and the bigger name. And Carrie actually did an interview around that time to basically give her thoughts and opinions on the situation. They ended up putting Beyonce on it, and I wasn't mad, you know. She, she wanted to be like the king and queen thing, which is, it was cool. I got my fellow sing on, and yeah, let's get it. Now, Carrie, yeah. I have to ask you this. When you wrote the verse for Love in His Club, and uh -huh. we hear Beyonce singing now, yeah. when you wrote it, did she sing it like you sang it, or did she change it up? Um, yeah, it's pretty much the same. <laughs> you are crazy. <laughs> it, it pretty much is the same. It's, 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 oh, really? Yeah. Mm, yeah. You know, she doesn't write everything she, she touches. I know. 
So as y'all can hear, Carrie said that she was the one that was originally on the Love in This Club remix with Usher and that she wrote the verse that Beyonce ended up singing because Carrie had already originally wrote it for herself but got replaced with Beyonce. But instead of changing the verse, Beyonce ended up singing it according to Carrie. But Carrie said she still got paid for her writing and her publishing from it. So she still got paid either way, even though she was technically removed from the song and the video. And I think the part of the interview that the stands and the beehive actually got irritated and upset about was the part when Carrie said that Beyonce doesn't write everything that she touches or sings about, which is true. Beyonce, as well as other known R&B singers, don't always write their own songs or materials because one of Beyonce's biggest songs and singles, Irreplaceable, was actually written by a male, which was Neo. Now, back then, when she kept repeatedly getting asked, you know, about the quote unquote beep or drama between her and Beyonce and that whole song and remix that she made, they were asking if it was about her or if she was forced to do that song. This is what she had to say back then. Okay. So there's a rumor going on that um, Polo to Dawn uh -huh. talked to you into the studio leaked a record that's considered a diss song for Beyonce. Is that true? It's considered that. Um, yes, Polo had this idea, um, but no, he didn't like force me to do anything. I mean, it was a suggestion that I told him, okay, I'll try it, you know, I'll try it. And that was just it. He was like, I want it a little more fiery and that's cool. That's cool with me. I, I, I speak my mind and, and, you know, I make no apologies for it. So, um, yes, I heard specific names being brought up. No, it's not about that. No. When we played it for people, you know, people said, look, oh, it sounds like you're going at this person and that person. And when names, the moment names started being thrown around, we were like, oh, okay, we get it. Yeah. It's, that's not, you know, it's not what we wanted to accomplish with this record. I did want to address the haters and, and the hatred that I've had pretty much my whole entire career right. in music. Yes, there have been so many people that have tried to turn me off. And I said, you know what? I want to take that meaning of, of the song. And, uh, and just let people know you're not going to turn me off. I'm going to stay turning it on, like I say in the song. So that's, that's, that's what it is about. So as y'all can clearly hear in that interview, Carrie said that nobody made her do anything that she didn't want to do. She said she wanted to do the verse and the remix, and she said that she has no problem with speaking her mind and that she liked doing the song. But she did say that that was not a diss song towards Beyonce. It was to her overall haters. But people weren't buying it because around that same time, this magazine called Juicy Magazine was at one of the award shows and on the red carpet asking celebrities to hold up that month's issue of their magazine. In that month, it had Beyonce and Jay-Z on the cover because that's when they got married. Well, all the celebrities on the red carpet that was asked to hold it up and to take a picture and do an interview while holding the magazine did it, except for Carrie Hilson. You want to hold the magazine? Just shout out Juicy Mac. Peace. Now y'all, I'ma try to be positive and say that I don't think that Carrie really meant any shade towards Beyonce. However, you know, I just felt like it was received that way. I just think by this time, she no longer wanted to speak on Beyonce or anything like that because at this point, she was getting dragged by Beyonce's stands and beehive and she just wanted no parts of it anymore. So I think about this time, she just didn't want to say anything anymore. She just rather walk away. However, Beyonce's stand and Beehive still felt that this was shade and disrespect toward their queen Beyonce and they just still wasn't feeling poor Carrie. It was like no matter what Carrie said or did, they just wasn't buying it or feeling her and it was coming for her life. Every chance that they got. And this caused Carrie depression and caused her to go on a hiatus from music. At the height of my career, which was when Pretty Girl Rock released, I was bearing the weight of some personal and professional mistakes, and they just weighed so, so, so heavy on my spirit. I hit rock bottom a few times. And that's the thing. And um, I'm crawling back to walking in my purpose. I think I had to give up music for a while. Mm -hmm. I realize now that I'm grateful for all of those years because I have built myself back up. So as you can see, that situation really did affect Carrie to the point of depression and anxiety. She even took to social media a few times saying things like, why do people despite Carrie Hilson so much? And then she also said, it's too much. 
please, is everything I tweet going to be intentionally misinterpreted as a statement about someone or drama I know nothing about? But I'm happy to report that recently, Carrie did state that she is in a much better place emotionally and mentally. And she said that she does see a therapist every week. So I'm so glad that Carrie does take the time to really take care of her mental and emotional health. And I'm so glad that she's in a better place. And I really hope that this means that she will release some new music. I would definitely support it and go get it. I hope that, you know, she released something very honest and transparent about the highs and lows that she's been on in her life. But anyways, let's fast forward and focus on recently. As of yesterday, she actually did do an interview with Claudia Jordan on Claudia's second podcast called Out Loud with Claudia Jordan. And they always do, you know, live tapings of the podcast and then upload them onto the Fox Soul YouTube channel. So check that out if you want to see the full video and interview. But anyway, y'all, like I said, Carrie recently did an interview with Claudia. And basically, she's kind of changed her tune to her song about this situation. But yeah, you guys, Carrie Hilson did an interview with Claudia yesterday, basically revealing that back in the day when that whole quote unquote beef happened because of that remix of Turning Me On, where everybody assumed that she was talking about Beyonce, even though back then she claimed that it wasn't about Beyonce at all. She's now saying that it was, but that it was forced by, you know, people around her, probably like music producers and also her record company. Um, she said that if she wasn't going to do the song that they were threatening to possibly, you know, maybe pull her album and not release it. So she just went along with it. So she's kind of changing her tune from what she said before. And apparently she's pretty much revealing her actual truth this time check it out no one could ever compare to Beyonce let's just say the name that we're discussing no one could compare no one will for a very 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 long time and that was never my aim either however it was absolutely framed that way it was written that way it was not my lyrics it was not my writing but I had to pay the penalty and I felt crucified for ideas and decisions that were not my own that my arm was twisted to do it's the price you pay, you know, when you're early in your career, you feel that you have to listen. And when you buck, they buck harder and they make threats. And those threats are huge ones. And I really didn't feel like I had a choice. It was do this or this will happen. They're like, sing this song. I didn't have um, enough fight in me in my, I was maybe 20, 21. I didn't have enough fight in me. Um, so I learn, you live and you learn, you know, you live and you learn, you learn to fight for who you are. Okay. So question for y'all, if Carrie decided to drop new music or an album, would you guys actually go listen and support it? I actually would. I really would. I would like to hear what she has to say. But anyways, y'all, if you got this far and watched the whole video, please leave a blue heart down below in the comments to let me know. And thank you so much. I do appreciate it. And also, please give this video a big thumbs up if you actually liked it and enjoyed it and want more content like it. It will let me know that, okay? Um, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for all of your views and your support. Anyways, thank you guys for watching this video with me. I love and adore you guys so much. I'm so grateful and thankful to have all of you. And before you guys go, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel down below and hit that notification bell button as well as the all option to make sure that you don't miss a single video that I upload and post. And go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up if you actually liked it and enjoyed it. And that will let me know that you want more videos and content like it. Also share this video across all your social media platforms to get the word out there and to help grow the channel i love you guys so much thank you so much for watching and until next time take care of yourself and each other